Let's talk some security for a minute, specifically group managed service accounts and why you should use them and how to configure them. So why should you use a group managed service account? Number one, the system transparently changes the password every 30 days. Statistically speaking, you're still probably using a traditional user account to run services. And in that scenario, either you probably set the password to never expire or you create a alternate password policy outside of your regular domain password policy that specifies that that account can have a password for 365 days. So you're only changing it on a yearly basis versus every 30 days. Both practices bad. Second reason, the password is 240 bytes long. So it is a complex password that you don't have to remember. Nobody has to remember. And number three, it cannot interactively log on. All right, so in my scenario, I am going to create a service account that I can use on two different computers, my SQL machine and my SCCM machine. So first things first, I'm doing all this from a non-domain controller. So in order to do this, you're going to have to install the, the AD module for PowerShell if you're doing it from a non-domain controller. So that is step one. Step two, and this is more of an optional step. You don't necessarily have to do it like this, but this is how I do it. I'm going to create a security group in Active Directory and add the two machines to that group so they will have the ability to retrieve the password from Active Directory. So this is my group, two members, my SQL, and SCC Unbox. Oh, let me go back here. As you can see, no service accounts at this point. All right, so setting a couple of variables. This is going to be the name of my service account. Obviously, you could change that. FQDN because my domain name is hall.test. This is just getting the um, text host names of those computers in that AD group. Here I'm going to create my ADS root key or my KDS root key, which is required. This portion is to uh, trick the system into letting you use it immediately. By default, if you do add to KDS root key, it's going to take 10 hours. They do that for replication purposes, but you can use this code to uh, enable you to use it immediately. This piece, I'm going to get the identities of my two computer objects. And then this is really where the managed service account is created. So I'm going to use my name variable, the FQDN, and then those two computer accounts are going to be able to retrieve the password from Active Directory. Then on any of the target machine so in my case my s my sql or my sccm machine i would run this command to install the uh, group managed service account and then this command will test it it'll be a true or false this piece is for removing the account so if for whatever reason you needed to take it out of the system take it out of active directory you could do that and go back to the old way so let's kind of walk through this code all right so i'm on my sql machine i'm logged in as An admin, yep, Hall is my enterprise admin. So I have already done step one. So let's run this, set our variables, good to go. Let's add our root key, good to go there. Get our two computer identities. And let's look at that variable just for giggles. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna create my service account. So at this point, my service account should be an AD. Let's switch over to my domain controller because I don't have R set on that SQL server. Hit F5. So there is my service account. Now let's go back to SQL. I'm going to install it on this SQL machine. Theoretically, should be good to go. So let's test it. True. Now at this point, the service account is on there. It's not being used by any service. So I have SQL installed on here. I'm just going to change the service account for the SQL uh, service. So I am in Configuration Manager. Let's go to Properties. I'm going to Browse. Oops. I need to go to the domain because this is a domain account. Make sure Service Accounts is selected. And then what I name it? SVC underscore SQL. OK. 
Okay, should be good to go. And you notice it puts a dollar at the end of it. So the system has recognized that's a group managed service account. So I don't need to put anything in the password. Leave it blank. Hit apply. You're going to have to restart that service. Hit yes. And there we go. It made the change, restarted the service. Let's refresh, make sure it's still running. Yep, you can see it's still running there. All right, so as you can see, our service is running again. So that's pretty much it. Now, if I want to remove that service account, let's run this piece, skipping at the service account name. It's going to ask me to confirm, yes. Now let's go back to AD. Refresh and our service account's gone. All right, so that's a quick walkthrough on why you should use a group managed service accounts and how to do it. If you have any questions, all my contact net, contact information is below or leave it in the comments. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching.